Well, we just got back from one of our longest cruises we've ever took, 15 days. And I want to give you some of the tips and reflections that I had about long cruising. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Rob from Cruise Seekers, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for being with us. We are gonna talk today about long cruising. We just got back from one of our longest cruises we've ever taken, 15 days, and we're gonna talk about what you can expect when you go on a long cruise, and that is any cruise over nine days or more. So that's basically it. Anything, if you're going on a cruise that's nine days or more, this video is for you. It will give you a lot of insight of what you could kind of expect when you go on one of these types of cruises but before we get into that i want to thank each and every one of you folks who have become a member of the cruise seekers community thank you so much for doing it we really love you folks and if you have not yet become a member of the cruise seekers community and you love tips tricks reviews cruise deals those type of things think about subscribing and turn that notification bell on it is extremely appreciated by us thank you so much for doing such all righty so let's get into this let's talk about long cruises if you ever been on a long cruise leave us a comment down below we would love to hear what you think about long cruising and also let us know your thoughts about what's different about long cruising versus the typical seven eight days or less type of cruises so let's talk a little bit about long cruising folks we're going to start off and talk about how the food experience is a little different on a long cruise all righty food experience on a long cruise is a little bit different you know most cruise lines really have a good cadence for their six seven eight day cruises they kind of know exactly what kind of menus they're going to give they know especially what to do on three and four day cruises even five day cruises because they're just basically shortened versions of those typical six seven and eight day cruises but when you start getting into nine days and more the food menu becomes a little bit interesting because it's becoming more expanded they got to come up with new ideas and that's one of the things we noticed right away in the main dining room the main dining room menus were kind of hit and miss half of them we liked and half of them we were like eh we could take it or leave it that's you know just the way it worked with a long cruise at least for us on this experience it just didn't you know they just didn't have enough inspiration it felt like to kind of give us a menu that was like wow that looks like a really good menu for this evening in the main dining room we would love to be there versus going to the buffet or so to speak but you know it's just the way it worked for us and we kind of missed that really very well curated six seven eight day menu that they kind of know exactly what to do and it had a really good rhythm to it and good experience and good themes etc when you're going on a cruise for 9 10 11 12 you can't do italian night twice you can't do french night twice you can't do other types of things two times so they try to kind of fill in with these i guess you would call them more mundane type of menus and we were like eh we could take it or leave it we also noticed in the buffet a lot of repetition you're going to see a lot of repetition in a buffet during these long cruises. It's just something that's going to happen, folks. At least that's what we saw on our very first one. And we're wondering, is this typical? If you've been on a long cruise, let us know your experience with your dining experience on these long cruises. Do you feel the main dining room menus get a little mundane and kind of eh, nothing special going on here? Same thing with the buffet. Do you see a lot of repetition? I'm really curious to know what you have seen and what have you experienced? So now that we got food taken care of, let's talk a little bit about the entertainment. Now, entertainment on a long cruise is different than your typical six, seven, eight, nine day cruise, just like food. You know, those production staffs, they have a very specific set that they know that they're going to do on their cruises, typically six, seven or eight days. There's no different new shows that they can kind of give you during these extremely long cruises. So you're just not gonna get, oh, a new show, something different. What you're going to get though, is a lot of headliners. If you like headliners and different types of varieties, long cruises are gonna be for you. You're gonna see all sorts of different types of headliners. While your production staff, if you're a production type of person, you're gonna just basically see what you normally see on a six, seven and eight day cruise. So. That's something to kind of really think about when you're going on a long cruise. If you really like your production shows and you're like, eh, who cares much about the headliners, then long cruises might be difficult for you. While if you are a headliner person and you like that variety, long cruises might just be perfect. So what do you folks think? Do you see the same situation that we saw? Lots and lots of headliners and the production staff kind of, you really don't get to know them well because you only see them once every three, four days. 
Now let's talk a little bit about the activities on these long cruises. You're gonna have a ton of different activities on these long cruises. And since they usually are very special itineraries, you're gonna see activities kind of tailored toward them. For example, we were on a cruise to Hawaii. So we had activities that were very focused on the Polynesian culture. We learned how to do the hula. We learned how to play the ukulele. We learned how to make lays all sorts of things like that. You're also gonna have enrichment activities and seminars to kind of learn about the location that you're going to. We even had a dinosaur basic enrichment class because that's where they filmed Jurassic Park where we were going to in Hawaii. So that was another nice little thing. So you get those things. Plus, of course, you're gonna get tons and tons and tons of trivia and karaoke and the normal everyday type of cruise activity. Now, those activities, those you know basic activities can kind of get over and over and over and repetition and very kind of you know like oh my god not another trivia question it just gets a little over and over there's a lot of sea days that you had to fill in so if you're not big on the standard cruise activities you might get a little bored with a lot of sea days on these long cruises what do you think folks have you been on these long cruises and wondering you know what am i going to do to fill up these sea days and how did you fill up your sea days when you were on the cruise now a lot of times when you're going on these long cruises you're going to have a lot of sea days because you're either doing a transatlantic or you're going to a distant location such as hawaii and what that means is you're going to be doing some open sea cruising now open sea cruising can get a little bit more rocky and rolly than close to the you know the coast or in the protected waters of the caribbean so this was one of the things we did notice on this long cruise. We did feel a little bit more of the motion of the ship than what we normally feel when we do a Caribbean cruise. I don't know if this is just specific because we were in the Pacific Ocean. Let us know what you think, folks. When you go on long cruises, say doing a transatlantic or going to Hawaii, do you feel the ocean motion a little bit more? We did, and I'm wondering what you thought too. So if you're a little more prone to motion sickness, make sure you bring those pills or wear your ear patches or wear those things around your wrists because you will probably feel a little bit more of the motion of the ocean. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to talk about is the demographics you're gonna find on a longer cruise. It's just the way it's gonna work, folks. It's because a lot of people can't take more than one week off of work and because of these longer cruises bleeding into week two of the work week, you're gonna see a demographic that is older, retired people because they don't have to go to work anymore. And you're just going to see that. So if you're looking for a demographic in a working age community, you're not gonna see many people in that group. You might see some honeymooners, you might see some other things like that, but you're not gonna see a lot of families on these cruises. You might see some grandparents bringing their grandkids on this cruise, but you will not see a lot of intergenerational families. You're gonna see primarily retired people on these cruises. It's just the way it works. You're also gonna see a lot of people that are gonna be mobility challenged. So be prepared for that. Be prepared to give grace to people who need to get on those elevators, who have scooters or have walkers because they are going to be a lot more in presence on these longer cruises than say on a typical seven night you know caribbean cruise you're just going to see more of it matter of fact we kind of noticed that when we were going to our first dining event our first dinner in the on the cruise we noticed basically a scooter parking lot especially early dining you're going to see a lot more i guess you were going to say competition for early dining on these longer cruises because of this demographic. You're also gonna see those shows on the, on the ship being more filled for that first show versus the late show because of the demographics. Be prepared for very filled main dining rooms early. Be prepared for that early production show, that early theater show to be filled on these long cruises. And another thing to be prepared for with these longer cruises and the demographics is you're going to probably see some sort of change in your plans because of emergency evacs. You're going to have a lot of older people on these cruises. We had an evac from the Coast Guard on our ship. We also had to turn around one time from leaving Kona to go back to Kona to drop someone off there because of a medical emergency. I talked to a lot of people on this cruise and they said this is very, very typical on these longer cruises with the older crowd that we have, you're gonna maybe see some types of changes in your motion of where you're going to go to and might have to turn around or you might have to make an extra stop somewhere to drop someone off. 
just be prepared for that when you go on these long cruises let me know in the comment section if you've been on longer cruises and you notice that these medical evacs are higher in propensity when you go on these longer cruises i'm really curious to hear what you say and see if it kind of compares to what we've experienced as well as what we heard from other people on this cruise now with longer cruises and being in the same size cabin one of the things you're going to have to figure out really how to handle is how to handle your packing situation what you're going to bring with you and depending upon your cruise line if you're going to have the ability to do laundry while you're on the ship or you might have to hand it off to the crew staff to be able to you know take care of your laundry because a long cruise you're going to need a lot of clothes especially if you change clothes as often as we do we kind of wear certain things during the day and we change for the evening so when we go to dinner so we have our long pants and our polo shirts while during the day i might be walking around in shorts and a hawaiian shirt you know those are the type of things that i might switch around so you know 15 days two different outfits per day that can equate to a lot of packing so Definitely make sure you understand exactly what you're going to do. Try to figure out how you're going to pack for these long cruises. See if you have any kind of laundry benefit. We were lucky enough to be elite with the cruise that we were on. So we were able to hand off a lot of laundry to our you know, cabin steward to take care of for us. And we didn't have to pay for that. So we just basically packed for a typical seven night cruise. And we just used the facilities on the ship to get our laundry done for free. But other people might not have that luxury. So you got to plan really hard with these long cruises and what you're going to bring. Let us know what you guys do for these long cruises when you are going on them. I'm very interested to hear how you handle your packing situation with long cruises, especially if you do not have any kind of perk to kind of help you out getting some of your clothes cleaned. Now, the final thing I'm going to talk about with these long cruises is the casino crowds. We noticed the casino crowds to be very, very high on this long cruise. Now, I don't know if this was typical or atypical, but on our cruise, the casino was packed because, you know, there's only so much you can do trivia. And I think that during these long sea days, people were just trying to figure out what the heck to do. So the casino was always very, very full. It was almost impossible to get on the craps table at times too. So it's just, you know, something that you might want to consider. Let me know in the comment section down below. Did you notice that on your long cruise? Did you see the casino crowds being very, very heavy and difficult to kind of get the machine that you want or play the table game that you want to play? we found that on our situation so i'm wondering if you found the same situation too and if this is a bug or a feature of long cruises so there you go folks that is our synopsis of long cruising i hope you enjoyed it will we do it again yeah i think we would now that we know the ins and outs and the things that you have to kind of understand about long cruising we'll definitely do it again i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hey give it a big thumbs up it really does help that youtube algorithm and if you've been watching this long hey think about subscribing if you haven't done so already turn that notification bell on it really does help us and we would love to have you as a member of this cruise seekers community leave a comment down below let us know what you think about long cruising let us know about long cruising that you done and some of the tips and tricks that you use when you go on long cruises so until we talk again next time this is rob from cruise seekers reminding each and every one of you to always seek the seas bye now